welcome back to The Commit. This is episode 32. I'm Neil. And I'm Richard. So, Richard, what, what have we got going on this week? Well, I've got one thing that I wanted to alert everyone about. Tomorrow, we're hosting an AMA with the heads of our engineering team. It's taking place at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can find the link on our Facebook page or check the show notes. It's going to be a pretty cool opportunity. We had a lot of like, great response after our cover letters episode, and that was an awesome interview you did. Thank so you. We, um, we're hosting the AMA to give people a chance to ask all the questions they've ever had about dev careers. Our team's going to be on hand. Just ask us, and we want to kind of make sure that people are getting more of that information about this. Oh, it sounds awesome. I hope we'll all be there. And next up, we've got a special interview that Richard did with Sarah, who is a recent grad from the Flatiron School who's now working at Venmo. So Richard, take it away. Hey everybody, I've got Sarah here. Sarah, welcome to The Commit. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So why did we have you on the show? What is it that you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a software engineer at Venmo right now. Awesome. But you came to Venmo via a boot camp, right? I did, yeah. Cool. So what were you doing kind of at the start of this before you decided to make the switch? And like, why did you decide to get into development? Yeah, so um, I studied US history in college. Um, and, uh, and then I moved to New York and was working at a tech company, this small startup that was really, really fun. While working there, um, I got to see what the product team was doing, and I thought that was really fun. So mm -hmm. um, I left that job in order to pursue being a designer. That was my original intent. Oh, yeah. So you mentioned this when we were talking yeah. yesterday. It was kind of like a gateway drug for you, design, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, I left to sort of uh, learn design, so I was teaching myself the Adobe suite. Mm -hmm. And long story short, while I was sort of exploring the design world, I applied to and got into Flatiron School. Awesome. Yeah, um, it was really uh, exciting to get in. Um, and uh, so it was this five month long web development program. We focused on Ruby on Rails, mm -hmm. learned a little bit of JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Um, it's a pretty intense program as well from what I hear, right? Yeah, it was super intense. Um, and that um, is one of the things that I think was very unexpected for me. I didn't realize it was going to be so intense. Yeah. So <laughs> what are the keys, do you think, to being successful at a boot camp? Yeah, um, let's see. I think that um, understanding that it's going to be really tough and that it's not a you problem. <laughs> okay, that's interesting, right? So like, it's just hard. Yeah, I think it's really tough. And I think that, um, at least for me and the other people that went through this program with me, at least like in that batch, yeah. um, it was like pretty challenging both time-wise and, and sort of emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, I think it's just important to remember that like it is going to be hard and that's okay. Right, and software development is inherently frustrating sometimes, right? Oh, for sure, yes, yeah. Because um, I really, I, it almost just feels like communication, right? Like you're just trying to communicate with the computer what you want it to do, and the computer is trying to communicate with you why I can't do the thing that you want it to do. Right. <laughs> but like learning to speak that language is mm -hmm. um, challenging. I, I think that's a, like an interesting tip to like accept that it's a difficult process, right? Yeah. Anything else that comes to mind in terms of what about the time commitment? How did you find the time commitment? For me, at least, I think that it was important to sort of give up everything else to devote a really intense five months to just learning. Right. So like five months of your life, we're taking this time out, we're learning how to code. Yeah. Like I didn't really see friends. I didn't really go out. I do improv, but I stopped doing improv wow. to just like focus. Um, and it was really challenging, but ultimately, I think like absolutely worth it. But it worked, right? Yeah. So like, you got a job as a developer, so like that time was worth it. So to talk to me then about kind of like the transition of, and I think this is a question that certainly I hear a lot from people that are going to boot camps, is like, how do I go from like the end of the boot camp to where you are now? Right? Yeah. Like, how, how do I make that transition to actually turning this into a, like an actionable real career in, in software development? How did that happen for you? Yeah. Um, well, uh, so, so Flatiron School has a thing called a science fair where um, we sort of, the students display a project they've been working on and then people from other companies come and peruse and sort of if they like what they see, they will give you a card and then you can work something out. Uh -huh. So that's why I got connected with Venmo. Um, but I think, <clears throat> I think something that uh, often is easy to forget when you're in the midst of a boot camp and you're working with all these other people and comparing yourself to them is that at the end of the day, companies want to hire people and they want to hire people that work with the people that are already there. Um, and they recognize that you're junior. They know that. Like, you can't right. fool them. So they're like taking you on with the understanding that they're going to teach you, with the understanding that they like you. Um, right. So I think that is important to remember that. Like, so, like, being someone that people want to work with. Yeah, like, unlike the computer, you are more than a machine, right? Like, you have a personality and you can work with a computer. And that's what they value. Definitely. So, that's a really interesting thing. So, to think about, like, 
when you're approaching the career side of this and looking for a job, like making sure that you're presenting yourself as a rounded person. And yeah, yeah. Like you want to have fun every day at work, right? Like. That's why we do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so you want to bring on people that you also enjoy. Awesome. What's your favorite thing about working at Venmo? Um, my team, I have a really fun team. Uh, yeah. It's a group of five people on the web team and we just like are really, we enjoy sharing uh, things that we've learned with each other and we're very supportive of one another in, in and outside the office. Like, think back to like Sarah who wasn't a developer. Like, mm. it, what's the kind of, what would you say to her now about, like, about this transition, about this process? Um, you're not going to learn everything right away. I think there's this, uh, there's this, at least for me, there felt like it was a race against time when I was at Flatiron School. Like, by the time I finish, I must be good enough so that people will hire me. Um, and the, the fact of the matter is, like, you're always going to be learning, um, and people just want to know that you can learn. Um, That's a really good message. I like okay. that. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, let's talk about staff picks. So this week I picked a dream out by Shrinal and Jude. So what this hack does is it's actually a really cool augmented reality project. So this team uh, brought in OpenCV and, allow and it allows them to actually draw sort of buttons and slider controls around um, objects in real life and then use those and basically to activate those by pressing on them or sliding them to actually activate an Arduino control. So you get to draw something on screen, you know, and recognize features and then turn those same items into actual physical controls. So wow, I think it's really kind cool. of like a really neat way to sort of bridge the gap between AR and sort of physical reality and making it really right. useful. But doing it backwards to the way that we usually see it. Yeah. That's fun. I like it. Cool. What did you pick, Richard? My staff pick is Netra. It's actually from a team of hackers at USC. And what it enables you to do is help visually impaired people by constantly analyzing an image and giving you a description using Clarify. So kind of like subtitles for real life. Yeah, exactly. And tell me what's in it. Now, there are two modes. In one mode, you can give it a static picture and it'll describe everything that it sees there. But then there's also an on-demand mode where it actually it like streams the picture into the service and it's constantly giving you text and audio alerts of everything it's seeing. So you could just hold it up, stay plugged in, and you would always know what's going on around you. Exactly. Really cool project. Check it out. So that's all we've got time for on the commit this week. Thanks for watching. Happy hacking. Happy hacking. <laughs>